Making your own clothes can be a lot less intimidating than you might think. This shirt is super simple to make for several reasons. It only consists of two pieces, so no sleeves. The white fit means that you don't have to worry about exact sizing and the stretchy fabric works well to hide some basic issues that you might come across. I traced an existing shirt in this style, but I'll show you in a bit that you can also use a standard t-shirt as a starting point. Fold the shirt in half, line the center up with a straight edge and trace all around the seams. You only need to draw half the pattern since the pieces are symmetrical. We'll cut them out of folded fabric, so add a double arrow to indicate where the fold should be. To be able to sew the front and the back together later, we want the shoulder and the side seams to be the same for both pieces. So to make the pattern for the second piece, I start by copying those lines of the first one. The neck and hemline are a lot more flexible, as long as they start and stop in the same place. If you're adding sleeves, then the armholes tend to be different for the front and the back, but in this case they're just the same. Now that I've drawn the pattern, you can see how it compares to a regular slim fit t-shirt. Since the sizing isn't crucial for this style, you can use a shirt like this as a reference to draw your own. We need to add a seam allowance so we can sew the pieces together. As a baseline, I tend to use 1.5 cm. That gives enough room for most of the standard seam types. I'll need a bit more fabric around the armholes and hemline, since I plan to finish those with a double fold. So I'm using 2 cm for the seam allowance there. I'm planning to finish the neckline with a strip of binding, which means I don't need to add any seam allowance here. Let's talk fabric. The two main types of fabric are woven and stretch. For now let's just focus on the stretch. If you look closely, this type of fabric is actually knitted, and that's why it's stretchy. The stretch is directional, meaning it will stretch a lot more over the width than it will over the length. The fabric also looks different on either side of it, one side consisting of loops and the other of ridges. Typically with this fabric, the loops are what you want to show on the outside of the garment, and we call that side the right side. A big benefit of stretch fabric is that it doesn't fray, so you don't need to treat the edges after cutting. Anytime you buy fabric, you want to wash it first. This will get any shrinking out of the way before we start cutting it. I folded the fabric so I can place both my pattern pieces on a fold, and I made sure the stretch runs along the width, not the length. Pinning them down prevents the layers from slipping or stretching while I cut. The first construction step is to close the shoulder and side seams. Place the pieces right sides together and use pins to hold the layers in place. Now, let's talk sewing stretchy fabrics. You want to use a stitch that will still allow the fabric to stretch after sewing. If your machine has it, use a stretch stitch, and it looks like this little lightning bolt or saw blade. You can also use a zigzag stitch and set it to a small width. The main challenge people have with stretch fabrics is that they tend to bunch up and get a bit wavy after sewing. That happens when one or both of the layers get stretched while you sew. And it can be caused by the feed dogs that pull the fabric through the machine, the friction of the presser foot, or by accidentally pulling on the fabric while you work. Thankfully there are several ways to prevent it from happening. A walking foot is a little contraption that replaces your presser foot. A cheaper but less effective solution is to use a Teflon presser foot. I don't have either of those, and I tend to go with a much more basic solution, and that is to use a layer of thin paper. The trick here is to place a strip of the paper underneath your fabric as you sew. This means that the feed dogs are pulling on the paper and not the fabric. After sewing you simply tear the paper away. I use this trick whenever I sew stretchy fabrics and it works like a charm. I'm finishing the bottom hem and the armholes by folding the edge inwards twice. This completely hides the raw edge of the fabric and it gives it a very nice clean look. Fold open any seams you run across to reduce bulk and stitch all the way around. Stay close to the inner edge to secure it properly in place, but try to stay parallel to the outer edge to give it a neat finished look. For the neckline I'm using a long strip of fabric, also called binding. I measured the circumference of the neck, and then I cut a strip of fabric of the same length and 5 cm wide. Make sure that the stretch is running parallel with the length. 
fold the strip wrong sides together and place it on the right side or the outside of the shirt. Line the open ends up with the neckline and pin it in place all the way around. In this case you actually want to stretch the binding a little bit while you pin and sew it, especially around any curves. This makes sure that the binding will lay flat when you wear the shirt and it won't stick out. Once you've pinned it all the way around, you can cut the strip to length and sew the ends together. Sew the binding in place all the way around the neckline, again using strips of paper to prevent unwanted stretching. But pull slightly on the binding as you go to make it line up with the shirt. Finally, flip the binding upwards and sew a second line of stitching parallel to the seam. This is called top stitching and is intended to hold the seam allowance down and make sure the binding stays in the orientation that it should be. As a finishing touch, I added my label. I'm using different colors of threads on the spool and the bobbin of the machine to make sure that the stitches blend in on both sides. That's it! With only two pieces, this really is a simple shirt to make, and I dare to say that any beginner can do it. Just remember the tips about handling stretchy fabrics that I gave you, take it slow, and you should be all good! <laughs>